Moving on to 157, it's been a good duel so far for West Virginia, up 16-0. Major decision for Jordan Titus and a pin for Sam Hillegas at 141 and 149, respectively. Alex Hornfeck for West Virginia against Peyton Keller for Ohio. Hornfeck out of Mars, Pennsylvania. Hagen, or Keller out of Cutler, Ohio, Warren High School. And quickly, two points for Alex Hornfeck. Hornfeck working for more. He's got a count early on. He's got one to count. Keller but he can't in trouble get him. here. There's going to be some counting. Lifts the foot out of the circle. And two more near fall. I mean, that's just a. Uh, well, Keller, yeah. got, Keller got into some trouble in a hurry, and he's down. They're going to check on him. Well, here's the thing, man. With Hornfeck in that position, he's grinding and pushing forward, right? And Keller's trying to slide backwards, try to get some space and turn. And he's going to have a shoulder right in his rib cage pretty much the whole time. A nice low single, does a nice job changing to a double, drives right through him, and literally drives him all the way, the rest of the way across the mat. And you can see Keller trying to turn hard to base down, but Hornfeck's between his legs, so he can't turn his hip. And this is where he crunches him, and he gets that, that two-point near fall. He had zero point of leverage. He was trying and trying to find some kind of a foothold, and Keller couldn't do it. He's trying to do anything. What he's trying to do is get his legs to one side, try to pull a knee through, turn and do that. But Hornfeck does a nice job of staying right between his knees and continuing to drive him forward, which doesn't allow him to do that and keeps him on his back. And again, that twisting and turning I mean, with the shoulder in your rib cage is a, is a little challenging. Yeah, a lot going on there. And uh, again, you're not at your most comfortable position. Saw Keller a moment ago being attended to by Ohio's athletic trainer. That work still taking place next to the crowd as now Keller finally comes to his feet. I'll tell you what we learned this week, if we or we learned or we were reminded this week of the importance of athletic trainers at sporting events, Tony. Yes. Life-saving on Monday night in Cincinnati. So kudos to athletic trainers and all that they do. Back to action here. Hell, Keller is good to go. A Hornfeck, a quick shot at the ankle. I like that he went back on offense really quickly there, Tony. No doubt about that. Same shot, does the same thing, gets the same result without him being on his back. But now he's got the leg in. And, and Hornfeck is pretty good on top. He does a nice job of usually maintaining some good pressure. He likes the leg, and he also likes to likes that bar that, and, that, and that tilt. Hornfeck not able to wrestle at Midlands. We last saw him against Fairmont State, where he won by a pin in the first period. And one thing that Tim Flynn said, we talked to him prior to the Fairmont State match, is that he really likes Hornfeck's A-level effort, and he's getting that all around this season. Yeah, he's done a nice job of, of maturing and improving, except he makes a big mistake right there. Instead of driving through it, he went to the other side, and now he's got the potential to give up a near fall. He's trying to work that left ankle. There's two. There's, yeah, there's going to be the reversal. And just as you praise somebody, what does he do? He falls off, basically. He tried, what he was trying to do, it looked like he was trying to pull his leg out, and instead of driving through Keller and taking his leg out that way, he tried to take pressure off and pull his leg out forward. Keller took advantage of that, was able to pop his hip into him, knock him on his back, and get himself a reversal. Had a case of a guy who had all the momentum in a match, just really trying to swing for the fences in one big fell swoop there, and it just didn't work. Yeah, I don't know if he was swinging for the fences. It looked like he was in a spot where he didn't really want to be, and he couldn't figure out how to get out of it the way that he wanted. I think he really thought he could overpower Keller. Potentially. And now he's on, on his, on, now he's in the same spot. Now they're just reverse spots, right? Keller's got the leg in, he's on top. and All that riding time that Hornfeck earned early in the round just melting away here as we wind down a first period. Who would have thought about a minute into this bout that uh, after the first period, the riding time would favor Peyton Keller? Well, that's why we keep wrestling, right? So here's the thing, Hornfeck's got push his leg out, uh, catch the other leg on the other side. Keller's just got, got the leg in and is going to stay on top here for the rest of the period. It's going to end up with the 22 seconds of riding advantage. 
So go back to this, Tony. Where, where does Hornfeck slip up? Well, he's trying to pull the leg out. And again, we were talked about pressure and the hip pressure, right? He doesn't have any of that, and Keller just steps over the top of him because Hor uh, Hornfeck's not driving into him from that position. Doesn't have any weight on him. And makes it easy for Keller to get out. Now, we're in the same spot, and technically, Hornfeck is doing a similar thing in that he's hanging there rather than driving with it, rather than extending it and putting pressure down on Keller. Now some pressure being put down, but for a minute there, it really seemed like Keller could have turned to his left and reversed that on Hornfeck. Yes, he can, because Hornfeck, again, does some great things, but right now he doesn't have a lot of hip pressure. Keller's got a chance to slide out of here and get himself another reversal. And not that, not only that, he has a chance to get two on Hornfeck. And now he's got he's got that sort of that can opener situation. They didn't give him on that far leg. They didn't give him the reversal point, but they gave him the takedown. Well, they gave him. I, I assume they gave him a reversal because Hornfeck was six down I mean the, down, the, six I mean four, the escape yeah. point. I'm sorry. Right. So, but again, Hornfeck has got to do a better job on top. He's just sort of hanging there for whatever reason. And and now he's a, in a position to potentially give up a near fall. That's a pretzel right there. Well, and and. He's got a base down, and he should be kicking that leg out, but he's not doing it. He's going to get a two-point near fall. There it is. He's going to have four points, and now Keller is up, going to be up eight to six. And he's got to kick that leg out, and he's not, not doing it, right? He's kill, leaving Keller with the leg in as if he doesn't ride that way when he's on top, right? And so he's letting the guy do to him what he should be doing to the other guy. Don't let him keep the leg in. Extend the leg, get the leg out, pull your hip knee close so that you block him out from there, and then work your way back to your feet. But right now, he's just getting beat up. Testament of resiliency to Peyton Keller because for a minute, it looked like he may have to injury default from this bout, and all of a sudden, he's up 8-6. As we'll take another look at his near fall. Well, he's just... So he's got the leg in, he's pulling the knee towards him, and Hornfeck does not get the leg out. He keeps pulling on Keller's leg, which in some ways is keeping him from turning, but once he lets go, he's got no leverage, and he's not being able to get his leg out of there, and therefore, they end up with a situation where he gives up that near fall. Ohio looking to get on the team scoreboard here. As we wrestle on the third, Hornfeck dominant early, but really for the last period and a half, it's been all Peyton Keller. Well, Keller's done the better job on the mat, right? Hornfeck is dominated from being on the top or from being on his feet. He's got two takedowns, done a nice job with that, but when he's gotten on top, he's just not been very productive that way. And he's gotten a little lazy and sloppy, and Keller's taken advantage of that. Where he's had advantages right here on the feet. But right now, Keller's doing a better job of staying in position, and he's lower than Hornfeck, so Hornfeck's having a tough time shooting underneath him. And he's tired. I mean, well, everybody's going to be tired. you got a minute left in the third period. They're both pretty exhausted. They've been going through this. Now it's a matter, it's not necessarily just a battle of wills, but when you get tired, this is where your technique starts to break down. Well, Peyton Keller had to expend a lot of energy, particularly in that first period, getting out of the grass battle out of Hornfeck. You know, Hornfeck, right now, again, yes, there's 54 seconds of riding time, so he doesn't have a minute yet. That six seconds means something. Yeah. And it's 8-6, eight, six, it's eight, six, so a takedown ties the matchup. Now, here you see the other thing. Hornfeck's probably saying, well, I take down, I tie the matchup, but if I'm on top and I give up a, an escape or I give up a reversal, then I lose the match. Now, we get down to 25 seconds. Half-hearted shot for Hornfeck. We'll see what other guy does here. 20 to go in the third period. Still a two-point advantage for Peyton Keller. I'd say that he's not really looking very good right here, Hornfeck is. Keller's done a nice job of blocking him out and holding on to the leg. Hornfeck has not moved his feet. They're going to push out of bounds with about... No, they're not going to go out of bounds. I mean, that's period's going to end right here on the boundary. So Peyton and Keller then, with an impressive comfort behind win on Alex Hornfeck. 8-6 in Ohio on the board. Peyton Keller out of Cutler, Ohio, picks up the win. And for Hornfeck, it's just the third time he'll lose in competition this season. So we move on to 165 after Peyton Keller defeats Alex Hornfeck at 